the scientific and cultural net science and technology. University physics electricity and magnetism. The electric field. The electric dipole. An electric dipole consists of two equal, but opposite charges, separated by a distance d. An example of a permanent electric dipole is sodium chloride molecule, which consists of a sodium and chlorine ions. Or a water molecule, in which the two hydrogen atoms form an angle of 105 degrees, with the oxygen atom at the vertex. The oxygen side is negative, while the hydrogen side is positive. Some molecules or atoms are symmetrical, in which the center of the electrons coincides with the center of the positive charge of the nucleus. Those molecules have no permanent dipole, however, when such molecules are placed in an external electric field, the negatively charged electrons surrounding the nucleus slightly shift away from the positive nucleus, producing an induced electric dipole. When the field is removed, the molecules come back to symmetry losing the dipole effect. Any separation of equal and opposite charges gives rise to a dipole. As an example, a radio transmitting antenna with a long straight wire, on which electrons move back and forth from one side to the other, changing the polarity every half cycle, can also be considered as a dipole. Another example of an electric dipole involves the electrical activity of the heart muscle, as it contracts and expands. This autonomous activity produces potential differences or voltages that can be measured across various points on the body, and is used by physicians to determine the health of the heart. To find the electric field near a dipole at point P on the x-axis, let us consider a dipole with its center at the origin with each charge a distance d over 2 from the origin. r is the distance from the origin to point p. Consider r1 to be the distance from the positive charge to point p. So, r1 is equal to r plus d over 2. And similarly r2 which is the distance from the negative charge to p, is equal to r minus d over 2. The total electric field, E, is equal to E1 minus E2. Substituting for E1 and E2 in terms of distance R, we get Simplifying this expression by finding the common denominator, and opening the brackets in the numerator, we get Let us see what happens if point P is far from the dipole, that is, if R is much greater than D. In this case, r squared will be a lot greater than d squared, so d squared can be ignored, and the expression becomes
This can be written in terms of a quantity called the dipole moment P. The dipole moment which is denoted by the letter P, is defined as, P is equal to charge Q times the distance between the two charges. The direction of the dipole moment is from the negative to the positive charge. When the dipole is placed in an external electric field, the dipole moment tends to point along the direction of the external field. In a uniform electric field, the net force on the dipole is zero, but the dipole experiences a torque that tends to rotate it to align it with the direction of the field. The amount of torque depends on the strength of the field, the distance between the charges, and the orientation of the dipole. The torque is maximum when the dipole is at a right angle to the field. The torque is defined as the vector cross product of the displacement, d, from the axis of rotation, and the force f. Note that the torque is a vector, that is perpendicular to the plane containing the force and the displacement. Its direction can be found using vector multiplication or the right hand rule. Tau equals d cross f which is equal to magnitude of d times f sine theta. This can be written in terms of the electric field as d times q e sine theta. Theta is the angle between the direction of the external field and the direction of the dipole moment. If the axis of rotation is chosen to be the center of the dipole, then the torque, because of each charge becomes d over 2 cross f. Since the torque due to the other force is the same, and acts in the same direction, then the total torque acting on the dipole becomes tau equals P e sine theta. Forces between atoms When two hydrogen atoms are far apart, the attractive force between each nucleus and the electron of the other atom is very weak, and each electron is in an S orbital by itself. If the two atoms are brought close to each other, then the attractive force increases, and at a certain point, it will balance the repulsive force between similar charges. At that position an equilibrium will be reached. The electron orbitals overlap, and each atom takes the electron of the other atom, for part of the time, giving it a stable orbit. The overlap creates a new orbital covering the molecule. The covalent bond produced, by the overlapping of any two half-filled atomic orbitals, is called sigma bond. Note that the maximum number of electrons in an s orbital is 2. A covalent bond is formed when the combined orbital, has less energy than the sum of the energies of the separate orbitals, and energy will be needed to separate the atoms, to bring the electrons to their original energy levels in the separate atom. When two atoms of the same element form a covalent bond, the electrons in the bond are shared equally by the two nuclei, and the center of positive charges coincides with the center of the negative charges, making the molecule non-polar, with no permanent dipole. Bonds of some molecules with several atoms may also form non-polar molecules due to symmetry. Examples, oxygen molecule, nitrogen molecule, and carbon dioxide. Non-polar molecules have low melting and boiling points and low densities. They also have low solubility in water because they exist as separate units with very little interaction with each other. As an example carbonation involves the addition of carbon dioxide gas to beverages under high pressure. When the bottle is open, the gas starts to escape, and when the drink is poured into a glass, and left out most of the gas escapes due to its low solubility, forming the bubbles that we see. Adding carbon dioxide to drinks also reduces the amount of oxygen in the water. Oxygen needed by the body to obtain energy from food, and carbon dioxide that is liberated, are carried by the fluids in the body, but they are not usually soluble in the fluids, so these gases need to form chemical bonds with certain molecules in order to be carried through the body. Aquatic organisms depend on the oxygen that is dissolved in water, and their survival depends on the rate of transfer of oxygen through their membranes. Warm water contains less oxygen than cold water, 
because molecules become loose due to the thermal energy present in water. Many aquatic organisms are adversely affected by rise in temperature that results from generating plants and other industries that use the oceans and rivers for cooling, causing thermal pollution. In polar molecules the center of the positive charge does not coincide with the center of the negative charge, and the molecule exhibits a dipole moment. Polar molecules have higher densities, with higher melting and boiling points than non-polar molecules and have moderate solubility in water.